Some types of weapons end up only in the hands of the gifted. A divine weapon is the materialization of a person's soul, possessing unique abilities. A noble family once defeated an evil god, the Ducal House of Catastrophe. People from this family are born with a golden spoon in their mouths. They have strong bodies, incredible talent, and divine weapons. Bell was born into this family. Naturally, he was expected to become a hero who would proudly wield his sacred weapon. Or rather, it should have been that way. At the oracle ceremony, where a person's divine weapon is determined, Bell received nothing. He became the only loser in the entire history of their family. He was bullied by the rest of the family, who shouted at him to get out. The second son of the Catastrophe family, Zane, was particularly hostile. He grabbed Bell by the hair and said that a non-entity like him, who was unable to summon divine weapons, had no place there. Poor beaten Bell was unable to utter a word and could only groan in pain. Standing nearby were the youngest daughter, Sarah, and the eldest daughter, Jessica. Jessica watched with a smile while Sarah was very worried. Unable to stand it any longer, Sarah decided to help her brother, but her older sister tripped her. Jessica put her foot on Sarah's head and asked what she was up to. Jessica told her to simply observe and see what happens to non-entities like them, calling Sarah a weak mudblood. Seeing this, Bell called out to his little sister in concern, but at that moment, Zane pulled him higher by his hair and stabbed him in the stomach. Bell fell back to the ground, and Zane sat on top of him, hitting him in the face and calling him a mudblood. With a smile, he asked if Bell was sure he could handle it, calling him a mongrel. At the same time, Jessica began to beat Sarah. She and Zane taunted them, calling them mongrels and children of a concubine. They were bullied at every opportunity. After tiring of the beatings, Bell and Sarah were left alone. Bell bowed his head and said it was all his fault, needing to apologize. Sarah smiled and told him not to worry. She would always be there for him. Bell said her name quietly and then promised to become stronger, even without divine weapons. He looked up at her with a determined look and vowed to protect her at the cost of his life. Hearing these words, she was delighted and rushed into his arms, thanking him. But alas, he did not keep his promise. A few days later, he was kicked out of the house during a heavy rainstorm. The only thing on his back was a small bag. The gates of the estate closed behind him, and he raised his head, allowing the rain to flow down his face as he cursed in his thoughts. He understood that without him, Sarah would be left completely alone with their cruel family. He needed strength to get her out of there. Possession of ordinary weapons would do nothing against those wielding divine weapons, so he had to become stronger. He simply had no choice. He finally reached the city as the rain stopped. The first thing he did was run into a gun shop. He placed a bag of coins on the table with a ringing sound, poured them out, and told the shop owner that he would take one of each type of weapon. The man ran his fingers over the gold coins, counting them, then looked up at Bell in surprise and asked if he was planning to start a war. Two years passed. Bell had acquired a horse and was now galloping into the forest with all the types of weapons he had obtained earlier. His gaze was filled with determination for the upcoming battle. A whole horde of armed goblins awaited him ahead. Before the fight, Bell laid out all his weapons on a cloth, then took up a sword and mace. Looking at the monsters with a smile, he said he was starting. He swung his two weapons, cutting through the air, and then began quickly switching weapons while fighting the goblins. In this way, he killed everyone who attacked him. But suddenly, he heard steps behind him. On top of the rock stood a man in a white robe. His face was not visible under his hood. Becoming interested in the young man, he called out to him and asked if he always carried so many weapons with him. He had to because there was no divine thing, right? Bell turned around in surprise when he heard the stranger's words. The stranger said he had forgotten why he had set off. His task was to find a person to whom he could entrust this. He was looking for a person with great heroic potential. Bell turned his whole body towards him, looking at him with suspicion and waiting for what would happen next. A bright flash lit up in the man's palm. Then he extended both hands forward and released a bright spark towards Bell, which forced him to cover his eyes with his hands from the bright light. As soon as the flash faded, Bell opened one eye and saw a sheath stuck in the ground in front of him. Bell was surprised and even nervous. The stranger said that he was giving it to him. Bell looked at the snow white scabbard, which was decorated with gilded patterns and emitted blue sparks. Bell asked in disbelief, is this a sword? He reached out with his hand to the scabbard and then pulled it out of the ground. 
Examining it more closely, he exclaimed, Is it just a scabbard? But this was not an ordinary scabbard. It was the divine scabbard of Avalon, a one-of-a-kind divine weapon that allows you to store other divine weapons and transfer them to others. It is passed on from generation to generation, each time increasing its strength. Now it contains the weapons of five great heroes. If someone can master each of them, then the most powerful divine weapon in the world will be in that person's hands, and that person should be Bell. Three years passed. Bell, together with the stranger in the white robe, stood on a high tower among the rocks. A red dragon flew in the sky, growling and suddenly heading down. It opened its mouth wide, releasing flames. Bell extended one hand forward, igniting a bright blue flash, and said that he did not care about these attacks. He summoned the scabbard of Avalon, and seconds later, it appeared in his hand. He lowered them down, and holding his other hand ready, told the weapon to appear. The snow-white sheath sparkled, bright blue flashes appeared near Bell's other hand, and in an instant, Achilles' windshield appeared. At that moment, the dragon flew close enough to strike and released hot flames from its mouth. Bell covered himself with the shield, building a protective barrier. Following this, he immediately summoned the holy storm hammer. He pulled his hand with the weapon back, preparing to jump, and then sharply jerked upward, raising the weapon above the dragon. He struck the dragon with his thunder hammer, Mjolnir, Thor's hammer, because of the force of the blow, the dragon was nailed with its muzzle to the tower, and after that, the monster no longer moved. Bell walked away from the dragon and headed towards his mentor, putting away his sheath. The man said that he had already mastered Avalon and should go to his sister. Even an S-rank paladin would not be a hindrance for him. Bell was at first surprised by his words, then delighted, and said that he understood. He soon set out on his journey, and thought that five years had passed since his exile, but now he had the power to protect his dear little sister. Let her just wait for him. He pursed his lips and thought that he was already on his way. Night fell, and Bell saw bright flashes of flame and black smoke on the horizon coming from the duchy. He stopped on the rock, looking forward in horror, and thought, What happened? He approached, and among the flames he saw flags fluttering in the wind. He realized that this was the coat of arms of the duchy of Roth Viner. He cautiously peeked around the corner, watching how people in armor were fighting among themselves. He thought, is this really a civil war? But where is Sarah? He came to the family estate and, running along the glossy corridor, shouted that her brother had returned. Where is she? He called out. At the end of the corridor, he saw the doors open and thought she must be there. But as soon as he walked inside, he was terrified. His sister lay next to a fallen column in a pool of her own blood. Bell froze in place, his face reflecting the shock and horror he was now experiencing. He abruptly ran to his sister, lifted her up, and began calling her name frantically, but she didn't answer. He looked at her face. There was blood on her cheek. Her eyes were closed, and her lips did not move, all signs that she would never wake up. At that moment, Bell realized she was dead. He immediately remembered her words that she would always be by his side. Out of grief, he raised his head and screamed loudly, tears streaming down his face and falling onto her body. Why? Why did everything turn out this way? Why did I gain this power? He exclaimed. He had promised he would return and protect her. But suddenly, a bright ray of light appeared from behind, headed forward and pierced Bell's chest right through. Blood gushed from his wound and he wheezed in pain. Heavy footsteps echoed behind him as the enemy slowly approached Bell. Recognizing the mana, Bell realized it was an S-rank divine weapon master. The stranger asked, Is he Bell Catastrophe? I heard he was banished a long time ago. Blood flowed from Bell's mouth as he looked in the stranger's direction, thinking, Who is he? Does he know me? The stranger said it did not matter, as he would soon be reunited with his beloved sister. Upon hearing this, Bell realized that this man had killed Sarah. The man swung sharply and rushed towards him, saying, Let him be a good brother and keep her company forever and ever. Bell turned around and shouted, You freak! How dare you! But he didn't even have time to react. The enemy's weapon pierced his chest again. Feeling a burning pain, Bell thought he would die without even taking revenge. He wouldn't accept it. A bright flash appeared in his eyes, and then he found himself in a cathedral, seeing a priest in front of him. He looked at his hands and thought, Where am I? He looked around and realized that this was the Catastrophe Cathedral. But how? Didn't I just die? 
The priest standing in front of him said that they were beginning the oracle ceremony. Bell, in shock, thought, Ceremony? What does this mean? Did I go back in time? The oracle asked him to stretch out his hands and present the divine weapon. Bell pursed his lips, thinking about his divine weapon. He stretched out his hands and thought that at that moment he had not yet found Avalon. He would have to start again. He would be driven out again. But contrary to his expectations, a bright blue flash appeared in front of his hands and he thought in surprise that this was impossible. A snow-white sheath appeared between his hands. There's no doubt about it. This is Avalon, he thought. He took the sheath and realized he could start all over again. He could change fate with his power. This was how his real life would begin. The gilded pattern on his scabbard sparkled, and the priest, a little surprised, said that the divine scabbard was such a rarity. But unfortunately, Bell's friend interrupted him and asked if he couldn't fight with it. Is that what he thinks? The priest was slightly taken aback and replied that this was not so at all. Bell went back to the estate and reassured himself, thinking that this was the best divine weapon in the entire world. He entered the estate and ran through the corridors, thinking that if he had returned to the past, then Sarah must be alive. She's probably in her room now. He pursed his lips as he walked towards her room, then ran to the door and went inside. Sarah was sitting in an armchair, looking out the window. She heard the sound of the doors opening and immediately turned around, saying, Bell, with a smile. He saw her radiant smile and thought it had been so long since he had seen his little sister. She was just as he remembered her. Sarah jumped up from her chair and joyfully ran up to him, asking how the ceremony went and what kind of weapon he got. Instead of answering, Bell simply hugged her, thinking how glad he was that she was safe. Sarah hugged him back, smiled, and asked if something was wrong. Bell remained silent, and in his thoughts he only apologized to her. He couldn't protect her in his previous life. He remembered how she was lying on the floor covered in blood and vowed that this time he would not allow such a tragedy. She would never experience pain or sadness again. He would not let her be harmed. He continued to hug her, and she suddenly called out, saying she was in pain. Upon hearing this, Belle became very worried and let her go, apologizing. She took a step back and laughed, saying everything was fine and that his hugs made her happier. Suddenly, her voice became worried as she looked at his face. Tears flowed from Belle's eyes and she asked if he was crying. She patted him on the head and said that no matter what happened, everything would definitely be okay because he had her. Belle was surprised to hear these words. Then the door to the room suddenly burst open and Zane entered, saying that he saw the mongrels getting along well. He grinned and told Belle that he had found it. Sarah hid behind her brother, and Belle became wary, saying Zane's name. Zane grinned and said that he heard everything. He hugged Belle and asked if something very interesting happened at the ceremony. Bell thought that the priest had probably told him everything, and that was why he had come to mock him. Bell lowered his head and said he got the scabbard. A bark of laughter came out of Zane's mouth, and then he couldn't help but laugh even harder, clutching his stomach and saying that a sheath is not even a weapon. But for such a half-breed mongrel it will do, he said. He looked up at Bell and asked how he was going to fight with a scabbard, calling them both idiots. In a rage, Bell clenched his hand into a fist and said that Zane should take back his words. Zane frowned and asked if he said something. Bell looked up at him with determination and, raising his voice, repeated that Zane should take back his words. Zane got angry and exclaimed, How dare you! He clenched his hand into a fist and swung it, saying that he would teach Bell how to talk to elders properly. But this time, Bell did not endure. He clenched one hand into a fist, swung, and hit Zane under the chest. From such a blow, Zane felt severe pain. Drool sprayed from his mouth and he, no longer able to stand on his feet, fell to his knees, unable to utter a word. Bell cocked his head and said he had warned him. Never dare to insult Sarah again, he said. Zane looked up at him and shouted that he was an idiot. Blue sparks lit up in his palm and he shouted that Bell should not play with him. A spear appeared in his hands and getting into a fighting stance, he said that Bell was a useless idiot. I will make you weep and ask for forgiveness. If you do not comply, I will roast you like a pig on a spit, he threatened. Bell looked at the weapon and thought, flammable fire spear? Seriously? So be it. He extended his hand towards his sister and told her to step back. She called out to him worriedly, but he patted her on the head and told her everything would be okay. He smiled slightly and said she should leave it to him. He extended one hand to the side. Blue flashes sparkled from his hand, and he summoned Avalon. 
A snow-white sheath appeared in his hand, and Zane let out a chuckle, asking if Bell really thought he could defeat him with a sheath. He's an E-rank paladin. He doesn't stand a chance, Zane taunted. After these words, a flame appeared around his spear, and he pointed the tip towards Bell. Bell remained silent and thought about how paladins were divided by rank depending on their strength. When a person first receives a divine weapon, they are assigned an F rank. As soon as mana can be poured into the weapon, they are assigned E rank. D rank can use special attacks. For a paladin to rise in rank, they need to awaken the unique abilities of divine weapons. Bell frowned, thinking that Zane was so proud of achieving E rank at the age of 14, but still had room to grow. He grinned and Zane got even angrier, shouting, what are you laughing at? Looked at him with a grin and said he was being cute. These words made Zane even angrier. He swung his spear and a hot flame flared up around him as he shouted that he was just a mudblood and he would show him his place. Seeing this, Sarah was greatly afraid for her brother and called out to him, but he raised his other hand to the scabbard and told the Sword of Light to appear. Immediately after this, with a light and quick movement, he pulled out the Caliburn sword from its sheath and in an instant cut off the tip of Zane's spear. Zane did not expect this. His face darkened as he looked at Caliburn and thought, what kind of sword is this? Unable to stay on his feet, he fell to the floor, and the severed tip of his spear flew up and then fell down, piercing the floor between his legs. This made Zay hiccup in fear. Cold sweat ran down his face, and he thought that this was impossible. The scabbard was empty. Bell approached him and asked, What now? Will he make him cry and beg for forgiveness? Zane looked up at him and shouted that he had tricked him. If he knew he had a weapon, he rose to his feet, leaning on the wall, and said that he couldn't get away with this so easily. After that, he quickly headed towards the exit of the room, and Bell again raising his hand to the sheath asked where he was going. They haven't agreed yet. A flaming Ragnarok pistol appeared in his hand. He took aim and shot at Zan who was trying to hide in the corridor. There was a loud sound of a shot. The bullet flew past Zane's face and hit the wall, leaving a hole there. Zane froze in shock. He looked at the hole he had just made in the wall and then fearfully turned his gaze towards Bell. He saw the gun in his hand and thought, why did he just have a sword in his hands? He couldn't have multiple divine weapons. Bell lowered his gun and took a step towards him, telling him to never contact Sarah or him again. He raised the gun again and took a telling him to remember it. Zane became very worried about the threat that came from Bell, and he said that if he touched her again, he would put a bullet in his forehead. After that, Zane screamed loudly in fear and hurried to hide, and Bell sighed and put away his weapon. Sarah, who was standing behind, opened her mouth in surprise. Belle walked up to her and asked if she was okay. She replied that she was so afraid that he would beat them again. It was his divine weapon, right? Dull asked if he didn't say he'd figure it out. Sarah smiled and said he was incredible. Belle looked at her smile and frowned, thinking that he wouldn't let anyone wipe the smile off her face. Meanwhile, Zane reported everything to his father. The Duke asked, Is this true? Zane excitedly called him his lord and confirmed his words. His father, Duke Catastro Gallen, who was sitting on the chair, looked away and said that he understood Bell received several divine weapons. Zane got down on one knee and said that he had an unusual weapon. He must have made a deal with the devil. They must expel him now. The Duke smoothed his beard and said thoughtfully that this was interesting. He got up from his chair and walked past his son, which surprised him. He immediately turned in his direction and asked where he was going. Gallen replied that he was going to visit Bell. He smiled slightly and said that he needed to see everything with his own eyes.